But in running out of time, Lynn Shure chronicles their frantic journey to reach Peggy, the last hope for their dying son. Stay with us. Alexia on young girls. But there is another face to this strange illness, and it belongs, surprisingly, to boys. Their pain is compounded by the stigma of suffering from what many consider to be a girl's problem. It happened to the boy you're about to meet. His life was ebbing away when his desperate parents saw our earlier report on anorexia. And as Lynn Schur continues, this determined family is pursuing what may be a little boy's last hope. There's four of us all together. I'm in construction, I'm a sheet metal worker by trade. I've been married for 13 years. Monique's our youngest, and Ricky's 11. I had actually read an article one time on anorexia that talked about girls, mostly girls. Here, son, hook up. The article didn't specify that it could happen to boys. It said it was rare in boys, and I thought, why are boys? You know, why are boys? This liquid nutrition flowing into his body through a nose tube is the only thing keeping Ricky Rivera alive. Like an estimated hundreds of thousands of boys and men, he is tormented by anorexia. And although his body is deceptively filled out from the fluid, he is close to death. The Riveras have traveled thousands of miles in a motorhome from New Mexico to Canada with one purpose, save Ricky's life. It's hard, I don't care how tough you are. When it's one of your kids, it's a different story. Is there a special stigma for boys suffering from anorexia? I think it must be doubly hard for them because boys are meant to be a little stronger. But I also feel sure that when the world really understands the condition, it'll remove any part of that stigma. One of the things that we used to do was when you'd get out of the shower, I'd wrap him in a towel and, and just hold him there, you know, until steam went down. And it's been a long time since I've been in the, in the bathroom when he's showering. And he called me in and he said, Mom, can you come in and hold me for a little bit? And I walked in. He was a little skeleton. It took several doctors before Ricky was diagnosed with anorexia. Along in that article, it talked about how people die from this disease. And that our baby wouldn't make it. Like most parents, the Riveras blamed themselves for not seeing the early signs of the illness. We were in the store one day. Some of his peers from his school walked in there. And the second where he caught sight of him, he hid behind me. And I didn't realize how hard it was on him until then. It was really hard for him. He didn't understand what was happening to him. He didn't know how to fix it. He couldn't eat. He would tell us, Mom, I, I, I can't. I don't know why, but I can't. Frustrated, they finally turned Ricky over to doctors and psychiatrists. The treatment is they would punish him if he didn't eat. If you don't eat, this is going to happen. If you do eat, Maybe you can see your parents, that kind of thing. And I was thinking they must know what they're doing. But even Ricky's little sister knew it wasn't working. I told him a lot of times that I was scared because I thought he was gonna die. It's okay. What's wrong with what the established clinics are doing and the established care? They're assuming that the patient can do it themselves, and they're also addressing merely the superficial, the putting on of weight and exiting them from hospital. I think they're forgetting kindness. After a drastic weight loss, 15 pounds in two weeks, Ricky was forced to be hospitalized. But the very night the Riveras reluctantly admitted him, they got their first glimpse of a ray of hope. I was talking to a friend on the phone, and she said, well, you know, there's going to be a program on tonight. She said on 2020 and it's on anorexia. Tonight, a haunting journey into a world few people understand. Five minutes into the program, I knew this was it. I said, let's go. <laughs> get up. What are we waiting for? Let's go get them out. 
unmindful of obstacles and against doctor's orders, the Riveras pulled Ricky out of the hospital that same night and headed north. They were running for his life, trying to get him to Peggy Claude Pierre. But it seemed it was too late. They had made it to Seattle, caught the next ferry for Victoria. That's when Ricky began to lose consciousness. And then we didn't even know if this woman would take him. We didn't know if she had any room for him. Ricky arrived at the border. The child was just a skeleton. When she walked in, she took one look at me. And she said, you must be the mama. And she came over and gave me a hug. I'll never forget that hug. Because there was so much confidence and love. I knew we were in the right place. We spent two hours explaining to the family and feeding the child. And I fed him in my arms. And it was the strangest thing to see them bond because the doctors back home made it Ricky's responsibility. It's your responsibility to do this, 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 and that. And she didn't. She turned that around and said, I'm assuming the responsibility. Like she understood what he was going through. And he picked up on that. 